Hi everyone, this is Andrew from CAEExamTips.com and FCEExamTips.com, but I don't like to talk about that. So a few months ago, I asked people to send me some questions, and in this video, I will answer those questions. If I sound strange, it's because I don't speak to anybody ever, and I am forgetting how to. Question one is from Rebecca. She says, I think getting students used to the length of exam is an important exam technique to acquire. Now, Rebecca, that isn't a question, is it? But I think it's a good point. If you have an exam soon, especially if you are not doing an exam preparation course, you should get out your stopwatch and time yourself doing these activities even a little bit on a micro level. For example, if you follow my advice and give yourself five minutes of planning time in the writing test, just give yourself a little topic, spend five minutes writing a plan. What does it look like? Is that a finished plan? Is five minutes enough? Did it feel like five minutes? Do you need three minutes? Do you need seven minutes? You have to practice. So do it a few times, get a feel for how long it's going to be especially closer to the exam. Thanks, Rebecca. Next is from Laia. Laia writes, how can I improve my pronunciation? Well, I am in the minority of English teachers, I think, who doesn't care about your pronunciation. Can people understand you when you speak? Is it tiring to listen to you? Those are the only two things you should really be worried about. If you think, oh, my pronunciation is so bad, why do you think that? Did people tell you? In most cases, I don't think so. Most of my students who asked about pronunciation were fine. They were crystal clear. I could understand them. So why waste time and energy on a problem that doesn't exist? Think about Arnold Schwarzenegger. He has this crazy accent. And is that bad? No, it's great for his career. That's his brand. He's the biggest action movie star in the world. He's the governor of California. He achieved everything he wanted in life in, in a foreign language. And his pronunciation didn't hold him back. Okay. Um, if you record yourself and listen back and you just think, oh my God, I can't even understand what I'm saying then okay, then you need to do something about it. If people tell you, oh, you know, it's really exhausting listening to you, then do something about it. I'm not an expert in pronunciation because I didn't teach it much. Um, but one thing I would recommend is to really exaggerate when you are talking, not all the time like a crazy person, but just a little bit to practice the mouth movements. That's something I do when I practice German, which is almost never because I'm a bad student. But if I want to practice some complicated German construction with all those consonants, then I say, Dirk Messer Linier, Dirk Messer Linier. And I should probably do it a little bit slower, just really widen and open my mouth that's how I would improve pronunciation, slowly and with a focus on specific words and phrases. But do you really need to? Next question. Where do I get specific FCE, CAE vocabulary from? From books, from websites, from everywhere. Ready for FCE? I think that's the old version, but at the back, word list. All the vocabulary from the book is here. 15 units across three pages. Unit one, items of clothing, belt, blazer, blouse, boots, and so on. It's all there. Um, but I might make some little worksheets, some PDFs about vocabulary. That's something that I can add to the website. But yeah, 
that's going to take a long time. So in the meantime, buy a book or use Google. You'll find some good things. All right, then a lot of people ask questions like, how can I practice speaking test part whatever? Um, yeah, the answer to all those questions is with exam books that you can buy. They've got four, five, six exams inside. And yeah, it's all in there. You can practice exams by buying an exam book. Um, if these are too expensive or you can't afford to buy six books or whatever, in most cases you can use older books from previous exams. So I think this is the new, the new book, but I've got in storage some of the old exam books from before 2015 and most of the exam is the same or at least the vocabulary and the grammar is the same so if you go to a second hand shop and buy some old exam book then you can use that if you have specific things that are hard like Laia says I don't find any book related to practicing the difference between four similar words um, then you have to buy one of the new books that's pretty much the end. There are some websites that have these practice tests, but mostly you have to pay for them anyway, because it takes a lot of time and money to make that. Um, this is uh, from Macmillan, the Test Builder series. This is Beck Higher Test Builder. But in general, the Test Builder books are really good, especially the ones where there's four similar words and you have to um, find out what's the difference because the test builder books they have the question they give you the answer but they also explain the difference between the four similar words so that's great but in general you're gonna have to spend a little bit of money buying those exam books also most course books have uh, exam practice inside how can I practice CAE reading part 7 yeah that's it exam book buy a book what are the best books, TV series, movies to learn English at an advanced level? The best book is the book that you like reading. The best TV series is the one where you want to watch the next episode. The best movie is the one you watch to the end. Um, one of my students asked me for a recommendation about books and I told her to read Shopaholic which is a book about a woman who likes shopping. And she was a serious business student, so she thought I was joking. And then she bought the book and she read it. And then she read book two, book three, book four, book five, book six. Okay, maybe she didn't learn so many advanced words as if she had read, I don't know, Moby Dick. But Moby Dick is impossible to read, so she would have stopped after four pages Instead, she read 2,000 pages in English, right? So for me, it's really clear. If you like it and you read more of it, that's the best book. You with me? Good. Right, and then her final question. I struggle with speaking part two. Photos! Because I'm not creative, spontaneous, and I don't know what to say. Nothing comes up to my mind in one minute. How can I improve this? Any techniques, any activities? First, I don't like when people say I'm not creative because you probably are creative in a lot of ways, but when you tell yourself, oh, I'm not creative, I can't do that, then you're not creative and you can't do that. But the only limit is you, so stop talking like that. Right, as for the two photos, um, you don't, okay, you don't have to be creative. Cambridge doesn't give you two photos and say, oh, write a story they just say compare the photos so imagine there's a photo of a man on a beach and then and he's reading a book and then there's a woman in a library reading a book yeah you don't have to um, write a screenplay about their lives and how they intersect it's just okay he's on a beach it's warm it's maybe quite noisy because there's a lot of people outside there's a lot of things happening She's in a library. It's quiet because libraries are designed to be quiet. If she doesn't like that book, she can go get a different one. He probably only has one book with him. You're just comparing the pictures. You don't need to 
create ideas. There is a little bit of speculation involved. Like you can say things, oh, maybe he isn't really reading the book. Maybe he's pretending to read the book so that he can meet girls on the beach. And she's probably really seriously studying because she went to a place where you study to study. So you, you can speculate, but that I don't know if that's creativity. That's just, why do I go to the beach to read a book? Why do I go to a library to read the book? I've been to the beach and I've been to the library. So I just remember what I did or just think, what do people do? Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that's creative. But I do think it can be difficult to do this task. So one thing about being creative is sometimes it's good to have a limit, a boundary. So maybe just as an experiment, you could take the two photos and just cut off the top and you, see, you just look at the top. Don't look at the bottom. So maybe in the bottom you see the book. So we're not even going to talk about books because we're just looking at the top. So you say, oh, well, it's a sunny day. There's, there's a blue sky, it's cloud, there are some clouds in the distance, so it might rain later. Oh, it might rain later. Well, okay, she's got a roof. It's not going to rain on her, is it? Right? So just focus on the top, maybe just focused on, on the left, something like that. Or maybe, hmm, just had an idea. You could start by looking just at the top, then just look at on, on the left, and then move on to the right. And if you go in a structured way around the picture, you do that every time. Maybe that's helpful. I don't know. You try it and let me know. And one other thing. Um, maybe yeah, people sometimes think, okay, I, I don't know what to say. I, I just, I look at these two pictures, there's nothing to say. Sit down for 20 minutes. Just look at these two pictures for 20 minutes and write down every single thing that you can say is the same and is different in those two pictures. So with the beach thing, you're going to say, okay, he has a book, she has a book. He's on the beach, she's in the library. He's outside, she's inside. It looks warm there, it looks cold there. He's in shorts, she's wearing a woolly jumper. Just all the single little details, write them all down. And then you can go on to a little bit more speculative stuff. So maybe he's there to flirt with women. Maybe she's, um, she's on a break from work and she's only there for an hour, but she could stay the whole, she could stay there the whole day if she wanted. Whereas if it rains, he has to go home. Just, you know, all of those little bit more creative, just write everything down. And after 20, 30 minutes, I mean, really, you should have so much. And I think at that point, you're going to see, oh, there's always so much to talk about. I got pages and pages of ideas from these two photos, right? Do you know what I mean? Just try it. Yeah. Next from a lot of people, actually a lot of people, including Norita, Diego, Alice, and Katerina. They said, hi, Andrew, my struggle has always been phrasal verbs. How should I deal with them for the exam? <laughs> Is your exam tomorrow? Then learn three, four, five phrasal verbs that you can use tomorrow. Is your exam next week? Learn 10. Is your exam in four weeks? Learn 30. Is your exam a year from now? Learn two a day. There's no magic solution here. You just have to put the time in, put the effort in and get started. Yeah, learn them one at a time. Get comfortable with one. Don't try to learn a hundred. Just do one, learn one, then the next one. Yeah, it's horrible. It's horrible to teach it as well. So, uh, yeah, maybe I should make some worksheets about phrasal, phrasal verbs. All right, and then a lot of people said things like this. I need to improve my grammar. I need to improve my past tense. I need to improve my reading. 
I need to improve my listening. Okay, guys, that's a big question, isn't it? I need to improve my grammar. What do you want me to say? Say, oh, uh, here's um, here's the the grammar pill. Take this grammar medicine. Now you know all the grammar. No, it doesn't work like that. The best grammar book is by a guy called Raymond Murphy, and all the English teachers know this guy. Well, know the book because it's great. Chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, super organized, little chapters, two pages, and it just takes you through the whole English grammar. There's, I think, three versions, like a, a beginner's one, and then an intermediate, and then an advanced one. And if I was learning English from scratch now, I would buy those three books and work my way through. That's how to improve grammar. Now, if your exam is two weeks from now and you like, okay, rrr, rrr, at the back of the new Murphy books, there's a little test section. And when you do the test, you check your answer. It says, if you, if you got this wrong, then study unit six. If you got this wrong, study unit 10, whatever. And that could be a little bit of just doing some damage repair on your weaknesses in a quick way. That might be the way to do that. I mean, ideally you would have an English teacher who could say to you, all right, go and learn past continuous, third conditional, dot, dot, dot. But if you don't have that, that might be the solution. I need more tips for the speaking test. Okay, I don't have any secret tips in my pockets. Everything I know is on the website. If you go to the speaking section on the website, you will see that it's like four miles long. It's the longest page on the internet. That's everything that I know in terms of tips. The rest is up to you. You have to read it, you have to understand it, you have to practice it. If you do that, you will pass the exam, the end. But I don't have more extra hidden tips unfortunately. All right, that's it. I don't know how long this video was, but I think it was a bit longer than I wanted. Thanks for all your questions. Good luck in your exam. Peace out, bro.